this the whole intention of today is to start the online course but I'm doing it live stream so every week there'll be another another course and it this will help me with my material and get the full course going um, but there will be quite a lot of repetition of stuff I've done and this is what I found is that there's a lot of material that you kind of reuse so all the slideshows are online uh, forestgarden.wales and this is the link oh, let me let me put the link in forestgarden.wales forward slash course forward slash index forward slash index html that will be in the chat I'll put that in the links so that's a link of all the slideshows that I'll be using and I'm kind of updating them as I'm going along as well uh, so I'll re-record all of this stuff um, for the actual course itself and then I will um, um, then I'll but I'll record these sessions and put them on YouTube so you will always have access to the slideshow and you will always have access to these videos on my YouTube channel now um, search for Forest Garden Wales on YouTube do subscribe Oh, I should have a subscribe link hold on a second I've got a subscribe link do subscribe to my YouTube channel just because that means I get to have a name if I if I get a hundred subscribers I get a proper name rather than UCKXK or something so yeah that's right so yeah if you have got a Google account do subscribe it's not essential it just makes it a bit easier to promote promote my stuff um, so that's the plan now as regards the free the, the, the idea is for the full online course um, thank you. The, the 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 full online course will be um, sold via Udemy at uh, udemy.com, and I'm not sure of the price because I I don't know what their pricing structure is off the top of my head. It will be around twenty, thirty, forty pounds. I'm not sure. There's a minimum price, so I've got to figure it out basically. And a lot. If you ever do look at Udemy, they have a lot of courses where you can get a free, you can get a cut price course. So there's some there's some good stuff. I, when I was doing my web design work, I did quite a few courses on there. And there's some really really good kind of quality courses on there. So so do have a look around, but do wait for either get a coupon or they they discount the courses all the time. So don't pay full, never pay full whack for a course. If you wait around, you'll be able to get the, the, a discount, and I'll have discount codes, I'm sure. Okay, so Udemy will, will be where the full course is, and then Udemy will also be where the free mini course is. The free mini course is a um, it's basically the planning section, the planning slideshow, and I've kind of compressed it and put it into one one free mini course. It's about all, it's all about planning with a bit of design as well. And what I will find is, or what I am finding is, that it's tying the different parts of the course together. So it's not just one, there's not just like, you, you need to kind of do the whole course, but everything links back to the beginning. So like the planning, you need to know about the plants, obviously. And the planning relates to the design, but the design relates to the plants and the trees and the shrubs and the ground cover and the ground preparation. They're all interconnected. So the trick is going to be to how to tie them and make get a coherent story so that's that's the overall plan um so now without further ado i will answer questions later on as i said um anything that's not working i'll i'll um uh, do let me know so if there's any kind of uh, any issues with sound give us a shout let me see if i can pop that down here okay now oh oh dear oh well i need to do this so <laughs> The backyard forest. Let's get let's get cracking. If you want the notes, press the P um, key on the slideshow, and you'll get notes. I'm actually a bit behind on my notes for each for each slide, um, but you can see um, I, this is where I'll put f further links and further information. So press P to get rid of them. P to get the notes. Okay. Uh, here we go. Welcome to Forest Garden Wales. My name is Jake Rayson. I am a forest gardener and a forest garden designer, which I'm sure you knew already. But if you didn't, that's what I do. So this is a course. This is a preview of the course, The Backyard Forest, Creating a Backyard Forest. 
and uh, this is a preview which I'm doing free uh, live streaming and on saving onto YouTube. The reason for calling it the backyard forest is to because most people don't know what a forest garden is and I really want to appeal to people with smaller gardens so that they feel that they can have a forest garden as well because most people do not have acres of land uh, so this is a photograph on the on the cover this is a photograph from Dr Carol Kirk uh, who has a small forest garden and um, she very kindly let me use it for the for, for, for this course and you can get an idea just from that that it's an ornamental, edible ornamental garden, and it's and it's a sm relatively small space, but it's this, it exhibits all the characteristics of a forest garden. So, the backyard forest is a forest garden in a for a, for a small space essentially. Okay. Uh, there's the URL. Right, let's get going. So this is me. Uh, <laughs> um, this is my website, forestgarden.wales, and my email is hello at forestgarden.wales. I'm on Twitter, forestgdnwales, uh, Facebook at forestgardenwales, and then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And the channel is uh, has all the live, all the recordings, the live stream, and uh, little snippets as well. So all the stuff that I do on Twitch, like today, will all be on on, on my YouTube channel. Um, so let's get cracking. It's forest gardening is actually <laughs> it's actually quite a big subject. So creating a backyard forest, even in a small space, there is an awful lot to kind of cram into a course. But you don't. The the good thing is you don't have to know everything to begin. You just the best thing to do is is to start. This is a photograph of uh, Martin Crawford's garden forest garden down in Devon. Uh, and this is a film uh, made by Thomas 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 Reigno. I'm not not sure how to pronounce his name. It's the, the National Geographic um, National Geographic short film. He he had he won an award for it uh, about Martin Crawford's garden. So this is like a big forest garden. But the kind of key question is really where do you begin with a forest garden? So I, I I've kind of broken this down. Um, for the purposes of the course, I've tried to simplify it as much as possible and then breaking it down into eight different sections and kind of walking you through each different section. Now, what I've also done, which is very exciting, um, I've asked a friend of a friend who lives in Cardiff, has very kindly said I can use his garden as an experiment. He has a um, small, relatively small terraced house uh, with a relatively small uh, back, uh, back garden southeast facing and what I will be doing is to uh, to walk through each stage I'll have a slideshow and me talking but I'll also have some additional material where I'm demonstrating what I'm talking about and then using it as a design uh, I am doing this remotely with him so I'm not actually going to be doing any hands-on gardening there but uh, the the whole kind of design and planning and considerations all that will be there which is which is good so the best place to really begin is with looking at what you've got, but I'll come on to that in a second. So what you'll learn today, uh, I'm going to do a quick course overview and go through each of the different sections and why I've created the, why I've created the different sections. Uh, then we look at a, a definition of a backyard forest, uh, like a small forest garden. And then I'm going to look at the characteristics of a forest garden. And then there's a, the, uh, the top tip guidelines, the the things to always bear in mind when you're creating a forest garden so those are the four things that we're going to get through today so first of all this is a this is a peacock by the way a butterfly on a um jupiter's beard uh, red valerian centranthus ruba rubus ruba ruba i think uh, so yeah it's a forest garden plant and it's a bit of wildlife and that's just outside uh lovely so the course overview First off, uh, introducing, it's what I'm doing now, introducing the, the Backyard Forest uh, online course. Secondly, uh, it will be the, it's the planning stage, and this is looking at how to get the observations for your particular site and different tools available to you and what observations to make and how to actually do a survey and gather the information 
but also this, the other part of that as well is to figure out what it is that you want and what you're aiming for and to get some kind of clarity for your your particular vision and what you particularly want um, and then we're going to look at the design process uh, this is a this is a photo this is a screenshot of a, a care package but the design process can be on paper as well you don't have to have any fancy software for the design process it's much more about it's much more a thought process than it is a whether you do it on a computer or on a piece of paper and we'll look at how to move the items around in a forest garden um, and um, yeah how to how to move the different elements around in the forest garden put things in the right place and that's that that process and then after that we will get on to discussing actual um, actual plants and the different functions of different plants so that's the remain that the remaining parts of the course and the remaining five parts all about the plants and getting your hands dirty so first up would be um, protection I'm just gonna check my chat that's all cool so first up is protection uh, originally I called this windbreaks but because again for it's for this for a backyard forest uh, I think protection is more people will think about protection in terms of um, it's it's less about the wind and it's far more about protecting individual plants because it's this kind of smaller space so that's all about windbreaks and why you have windbreaks and the, the advantages and, and different plants that you can use for 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 windbreaks and for protecting plants and other structures as well uh, and then we will look at number five we'll be looking at perennial vegetables a different perennial veg uh, my favorites and what I'm actually kind of shifting towards with a forest garden and I think I will find this increasingly with designing for a small forest garden is is, is it actually makes sense to design it to, to, to focus on different parts of the garden for having different functions so perennial vegetables like herbaceous kind of perennial veg I think are more of a kind of separate part with easier access whereas the the, the kind of fruit fruit shrubs for example black currants and and raspberries and etc there will be kind of more in a, in, a, in, a, in a different area so I'm actually playing with this myself with my own my own forest garden I have found it's it helps concentrate the mind to have a specific area for specific types of plants so it's not about the plants it's more about how how people use gardens so I'll be going through um, yeah perennial vegetables number number five lecture number five lecture number six uh, the canopy the canopy layer the, the big trees and in a small forest garden that will be the smaller trees as well but this is the, the highest level in the garden uh, and then on to ground preparation how to prepare the ground before planting and the reason I've done it in this there, there is a reason for doing it in this particular order as well um, because the key thing is to get the protection in first and is to enable the create a micro micro climate for your plants to thrive and then it's good to get going with the perennial vegetables because you'll get a yield you'll get a harvest from it quickly and then the trees the trees can go in and it's like you can do each stage and you don't have to rush on to the next stage so the ground preparation is before you get into the next the next part which is to um, plant the shrubs and the ground cover and I kind of put these together, yeah. I'll see how it. I'll see how it goes. I might these might change a little bit, but I'll put these together because there's a lot of overlap uh, between the kind of propagation and the, 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 the where they're at in the stage. So you, what I'm saying is, you can have the trees, and you can have the trees amongst existing plants, or you can have the trees in a in a lawn, so long as the tree is mulched. And then when you're ready, you can do the ground preparation and put in the shrubs and the ground cover. Okay. So that's the uh, that's the course the course overview. Excuse me. On to a definition. <laughs> uh, I do find it so interesting. Time and time again, I come back to kind of defining uh, a backyard forest and a forest garden. I'll use the terms interchangeably, by the way. So backyard forest, forest garden, um, and I think it's it's illuminating because it really questions the work that you're doing and the garden that you want and more and more and more I come to realize that the 
at the heart of this is the idea well, it's, it, it's Martin Crawford oh crikey I forgot to mention that as well Martin Crawford in his must buy book I mean he's a he's a very inspirational very inspirational character let me see if I can get this am I on camera yeah here we go so Martin Crawford very inspirational character very inspirational person uh, written an awful lot about um, uh, forest gardens and trees and nut trees and so he's got a wealth of information fantastic nursery as well anyway in his seminal book um creating a forest garden which i totally recommend because it it covers the process of creating a forest garden and it also covers all the plants as well so it's a it's a brilliant reference too so it's it's it's, it's great i use it all the all the time still a lot of information in there but it's um working with nature to grow edible crops and i think that is absolutely critical the um the whole idea that you're working with nature <clears throat> and this feeds in yeah so this kind of feeds into the the the, the approach that you're um that you're letting nature do the heavy lifting that you're letting <clears throat> excuse me that you let you, the the hard work is being done by by natural processes, not by human intervention. Now it is a managed space, it is a garden, but you're letting nature do the heavy lifting. So, and you're doing this by emulating the woodland edge. Now, actually, that's a bloody good point. Actually, I'm gonna make I'm gonna I'll, I'll keep notes as I go along. Um, and by that, emulate woodland edge. Uh, the the land want land <laughs> nature wants to settle at a natural point, and in, in in a cool temperate climate, in in a in the majority of places that is woodland. I mean, obviously there's variations, and this is what plants work towards. And if you hold back, uh, like an annual vegetable garden is bare with no perennial vegetables whatsoever, so you've got access to annual vegetables. But if that's that's a lot of work to maintain it at that point, and believe me, I spent last summer <laughs> working on a market garden, and it is an awful lot of work. Whereas if you have a garden that is on the on the kind of cusp of a of a woodland edge, it's on the woodland on the cusp of a woodland, then it's a lot easier to maintain because there's there's less weeding because you have a perennial ground cover, uh, and there's less. Um, you know, to add, to add fertility because it's the, the, there's nutrients in, in the actual garden itself, so it's far more of a complete um, ecosystem. And yeah, I think this is this is a kind of critical point. It's it's working it, that whole idea of a forest garden emulating the woodland edge. It kind of nails it. It's this this idea of it's less work because you're working with nature. You're gonna you 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 you're, you're putting your garden in the situation which is more natural so there is less work for you to do and you do that using perennial and um, perennial plants plants that, uh, that that grow for more than a couple of years and ground cover plants plants that you use to essentially cover the ground um, and another way of looking at that is to call is to say you're growing edible crops in a wildlife garden you 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 have an edible ecosystem and this has been the big revelation for me over the past couple of years really is this is this is really what a forest garden is it's a wildlife garden it's it's having your cake and eat it so um yeah this is yeah for me the kind of key the key takeaway it's sustainable it's um yes it's a sustainable it's a sustainable garden and it's because it's working with nature and you can keep on doing it uh, and a question then about why a backyard forest and i shall expand this section i think uh these are the climate strike uh, climate warming stripes sorry uh why backyard forest um so i'm just gonna make notes as i go along illustration for me, I think there's there's no there's an awful lot going on in the world at the moment, and I think there's kind of dawning a realization that things, as they're set up at the moment, aren't working. 
uh, and this goes across the board this is like a this is a human problem <laughs> as somebody said about black lives matter uh racism is a racism is a white problem and and i think this is ecological and climate emergency is a human problem and they are kind of interconnected there's i won't go into the, the kind of politics now but i've starting to see the connections between uh policy of, of of supremacy of um, colonialism and the climate and ecological emergencies so yeah there's I'll, I'll, exp I'll, I'll have a think about this and I'll expand it later on and I don't want to get political now but I do think there's an awful lot of uh, there are an awful lot of linkages about attitudes and how people live and a lot of this kind of has to change and in a small small way but a very significant way a backyard forest and a forest garden are ways to address this are ways to look at it and to reevaluate it and what we're doing with a with a with a with a forest garden is to look at our relationship to how we produce our food and our relationship to nature and so this is the, these for me are the, the the kind of two driving reasons ecological emergency and climate emergency uh so it then feeds in to other activities as well um, there's a chap called ron finley who is the gangster gardener in la and really interesting really inspirational because it goes beyond it's about the people it's about the food but it's about the people and how how he gardens and what he's about and i think it's the same with the forest gardening it's actually a political with a small p act and it's um, it's activism. It's actually doing something, and it's good for you, and it's fun, and etc. So I'll expand that. Uh, <laughs> I'll expand that later on. Uh, yeah, without getting too political on your asses. Okay. So characteristics and characteristics of a uh, characteristics of a forest garden. Uh, there's five. Yeah. There's 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 more. It's all kind of interrelated. But there are five ways of telling if you have a forest garden and where, for me, where you get to a forest garden. So firstly, it's sustainable. As I mentioned before, this is really, really kind of critical. This is at the core of forest gardening is, is it sustainable? And forest gardening, yeah, so, so is. The whole, the whole point being that all the, uh, all the, the, the fertility of the garden is provided by the garden itself. It's uh, all, all the, 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 everything is provided by the garden so like the, the the fertility and the pest control are provided by the garden you're not the humans aren't importing anything onto the site so you can keep on doing it so it's like you set it up once you've set it up then it just can keep you can you can keep it ticking over there's no need to buy bags of compost there's no need to do loads of watering there's no need to spray pesticides on there's no need to use herbicides on weeds so it keeps itself going yeah that's that's the kind of beauty with a little helping hand to kind of keep it in balance um so yeah and as part of that i do want to mention native plants uh because i think there's there's always room in a forest garden for native plants just take an you know take an example this is a photograph here of the of the of the bee that's a oh what is it changed its name it was a sedum um teled hypotelephanium uh, it's a sedum it's a orpine ice plant uh, which is a native sedum to the uk uh, and it's a fantastic bee plant and you can eat the leaves and there are actually other sedums as well i think which are more palatable but uh, but it's in it's a, it's a case in point you can have a wildlife native plant that fits in a forest garden and there is always room for native plants I'm going to do a separate slide on this actually, but I'll I'll figure that out. Let me just add a note, add a note, native plants. And the whole reason for having native plants is they've co-evolved with the wildlife. So not only are they providing pollen and nectar, they are also providing a food source for the different life cycles of the variety of different insects in the garden. And the more insects you have in your garden, then the more wildlife you have uh the, the 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 more balanced it is because then you bring in the birds and then you bring in the larger mammals and 
you want to create a balance so everything is kind of balancing out um, and the idea is native plants have co-evolved with your native wildlife so add native plants slide um and a side uh, uh, oh yeah there's yeah so a side advantage of this a side effect of this is that it's low a, a forest garden is low maintenance and with a backyard forest you can just imagine it's kind of such a relatively small space it's it's, it's great it's can, you can quite literally keep on top of it that there, there's minimal weeding there's because you have permanent living ground cover there's no watering once all the plants are established uh, there's you're not applying any fertilizers you're not making any comfrey tea because you're just doing really kind of simple chop and drop as in sh as shown in here where you chop comfrey leaves and drop them around the base of uh, fruit trees so uh, there's no digging because you know you're not really I mean occasionally you'll be digging up root uh, roots tubers like um, American 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 pig nut I think it's called um, apios americana uh, so it's, it's 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 really low maintenance, and this is a kind of yeah, it's another reason to do it because people don't have that much time, um, and you want to be doing other things as well. But oh yeah, it's 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 a it's a massive selling point, um, and it's productive. Now, oh, this is an interesting one actually. I th thought this was a uh, it's a cornus, uh, and I thought it was. Um, cornus, I thought it was Cornus Cusa, but it's actually, I think from the size of the fruits, it's a Cornus Capitata. Um, oh, I haven't got the book here, but um, yeah. Anyway, there's uh, the productive, the forest garden, the kind of defining characteristic of a forest garden is that it's productive, that you're you're getting something from it. And, and this is lovely because it's such a broad, <laughs> it's such a broad definition. You're getting food and you're getting, you know, bamboo canes and you're getting string from New Zealand flax and you're getting you know, herbs and you can get medicinal plants and dye plants and firewood and all sorts of things. But you're also getting a lot of enjoyment from it. And I think this is what really is kind of lacking is this, uh, there's a kind of, you can have both. You can have your cake and eat it. You can have a beautiful garden and you can eat it as well and it's providing a home for wildlife so it really is like it's a, it's a win for everybody there's a very interesting um gardener oh, I, i'll write his name down i'll put this in the in the chat actually oops um there's a really good gardener totally recommend him uh john little and his green roof company i'll put it in the, in the uh and he has oh i must yeah, sorry green roof company and i put um ornamental he does a lot of great work with waste materials from for everything from crushed concrete through to um leftover sand from road building to all sorts of stuff all sorts of different um uh, materials and he does really really uh, geometric gardens I mean do check out his work it's just like it's, it's it's so kind of interesting and it's the same for a forest garden there is this sense I mean I, I, I do feel that there is a real danger of it being not uh, ghettoized is the wrong word but kind of fenced off and it's like it's a natural it's a wild garden and it this is the way that it looks and it can't be ornamental but actually, no, you can, you, so long as you're kind of following the principles, you can make it as ornamental and as geometric as you like. Um, so that's why I think John Little, I must get some slides actually, and I'll put them in here too. That's why I think John Little is so interesting because he has really kind of uh, geometric shapes. He has kind of circles of, of, of crushed concrete and then grows plants, native plants that like growing, that cope with growing crushed concrete. And he'll use it and he'll have, you know circular paths it's, it's kind of really really ex really interesting really exciting so so there yeah it's uh, productive but it's productive in all sorts of different ways it's uh, it's productive as a, a, an ornamental garden so i'll add that to my notes uh productive um and yeah of course it's wildlife friendly uh, uh this is this is absolutely yeah this is kind of s a central it's 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 
you, you you're encouraging predators you're encouraging toads and frogs you've got a wildlife pond you want you want hoverflies that eat aphids and hoverflies that pollinate and solitary bees and set up bee hotels for them and log piles for toads and yep it's all kind of interconnected so you are you know you're creating a wildlife garden um and that is yeah that is absolutely central to uh, to a forest garden and then layers and seven different layers of the uh, i won't go through them three layers in my mind so you've got trees shrubs ground cover uh and everything in between uh but you're using all the available space and yeah that's kind of that's just like really really it's kind of really efficient in a lazy sort of way i must write that down as well because yeah um Garden. Yeah. cool and finally perennial you're mostly using perennial plants this is a photograph of a um oh goodness me what's it called not an artichoke the other one it's closely related to an artichoke um oh you eat the stems uh our brain brain's gone blank um but yes <laughs> you're using perennials i do know what it is i actually do know what it is but i just uh, the, the name escapes me so you're using perennials in a, in, a, in a forest garden mostly but you're also using annuals as well so it's not just uh, you're using annuals that, that are easy that they're easy to they self-seed so oh i don't know um poached egg plant is an example you've got a short-lived perennial like uh um columbine um Oh, blimey, you're getting better, get move on. Right then, so, yep, um, there we go. Okay. I'll come to the questions very quickly. I've got 10 minutes to get onto that one. So, so I'm going to race through the rest of this. So, um, you've had your, the, the different characteristics of the, forest, of the forest garden, and here are kind of four guidelines, and no matter the size of your forest garden, whether you've got a backyard forest or whether you've got acres and acres, these are the things that I always, always kind of come back to, to bear in mind, yet yeah, throughout the whole kind of process. Firstly, is, um, the protection. So you want to have a, 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 you want to protect from the wind. Ideally, you want to have a big, thick hedge, great for wildlife, it can be productive, and it provides shelter for the garden. Uh, whilst the wind, windbreak is getting established, you can use uh, nurse trees if you, have a, if you have a larger kind of garden. Um, you can have a nurse tree and I'm going to revisit this as well. Protection. Um, a nurse tree is just a small. It's a, it's a shrub that you plant in front of a particular tree as it's growing, and then you kind of you 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 get rid of it after a few years. So the example here is um, broom, uh, Scotch broom, which is nitrogen fixing member of the pea family, and it's like a, it's a really good kind of nurse tree. So you're protecting a tree, particularly in exposed positions, and then there's also a hedge, dead hedge. Um, uh, which is a pile of pile of sticks um, in between some other part, some other some other sticks, and this is really simple to set up. And again, I must get that John Little. He had a photograph of absolutely beautiful uh, dead hedge, which is more like a um, Andy Gall Andy Goldsworthy, the ch the artist who works with uh, natural elements. So yeah, protection absolutely kind of critical thing to think about whatever the size of the garden next up is spacing always 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 design plan and design and plant to the final size so work out and this is for big shrubs and for trees uh you always put a, pl a tree or a big shrub in to the final say size other plants you can move around more easily whereas trees and big shrubs are a lot of work to move once they get established so this means knowing your rootstock uh, if you're planting a, a, a if you're planting a fruit tree then you need to know what the uh, rootstock is because the rootstock will determine the height uh, the vigor and the diameter of the tree and you need to leave enough space in between the trees so that space is a uh, quarter to half of the average canopy diameter. So you've got two four meter diameter trees. It's between one and two meters space between them. And this is a kind of principle, yeah, that runs across small, small trees and large shrubs as well. So do get the spacing right, get the right plant in the right place that will fill the space. And like same for windbreaks, 
don't put something in that you're going to have to keep cutting every year. Put something in that will grow to the right size uh, so you, you, there's less maintenance involved. Next up is uh, ground cover. Always, always, always have ground cover. <laughs> so whether you're using plants or whether you're using, yeah, your, your, your aim is to use plants, um, but then you um, can use uh, bark or wood chip in, in the meantime whilst your ground cover plants get established, which I'll, I'll cover in ground cover plants. And finally, nutrients. Make a nutrient budget and um, make a nutrient budget and stick to it. Uh, just make sure that you've got enough nutrients in the garden. That's nitrogen fixers such as members of the pea family and um, oh things like um, Eliagnus alder. There are some kind of smaller alders that you can get as well. Green alder is one of them. But yeah, nitrogen and then potassium as well. In this in this case, there's um, oh not the not the small white Jack Russell, but the um, the the comfrey in the foreground. That's a potassium fixer. So add notes. So. So there we go. Now, I hope that's useful. Um, the things I wanted you to take away really are the whole idea of growing edible crops with nature and then it's the, the, the fact that it's sustainable. It's all about being sustainable. It's setting up a garden so that it looks essentially looks after itself as much as possible your work once the once your backyard forest or forest garden is established your work is a bit of weeding and harvesting and the odd bit of pruning and that's it um, and take your time i mean we i've been gardening uh, uh, we've been here for five years now in west wales and um a bit more of a bio yeah. and the it's it's a work in progress the garden is never forest garden a garden is never finished so take your time don't rush into things much better to concentrate on a small part near the house and bit by bit just keep on going and add to it and then do another bit and do another bit and it takes time there's no need to get everything done in within 24 hours it's um life is not a tv show um there we go. And so, yes, I'll just take some couple of quick questions, if there are any. Um, this is me. Oh, I'll put an appendix in as well, which I'll probably add to the notes. Um, but there's links on the slideshow to, to, to various books and decent websites as well. Um, and this is my email address and the newsletter where you can sign up and get notified of, of, of courses and live streams and things like that. And the music is by uh, an old friend of mine, Matthew from I Am The Mighty Jungulator. Okay, there we go. I hope that's useful.